to the Inside Story Hunters podcast, where our stories are the core of human connection and the driving catalyst for change, clarity, growth, and opportunity. I'm Lori Guzman, aka Lori with a story, your connection expert. Every week, we're bringing you the inside stories of humble, serial entrepreneurs, successful life changers. Why do their inside stories matter? Because we're helping them drive opportunities to the right people and their businesses. We are relationship experts who skillfully help others unveil their inside story with a goal to connect them to new opportunities. As an expert of uncovering the inside stories, I've learned there really are no strangers and everything's tied together. It only takes one great story to make a difference. So come take a journey with me and let's go listen to another great inside story. Here we go. Well, hello there, Tiffany. Hello. Tiffany Wondro of CNR Services. Welcome to the Inside Story Hunters. I'm so honored to have you as my guest here today. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Uh, well, and I'm, I'm so excited that we're uh, getting to spend time inside your operations, right? Yes. You know, God forbid I should start a podcast show where we just go on Zoom. We got to do everything differently. You're about to tell me and the insiders, the community that watches the Inside Story Hunters and those folks who aren't here yet, but they're going to find us along the way, yes. about the fact that you spend your life in many environments that most women don't. I would agree with that. And I think that's a perfect way to segue into your life story. And I, I'm going to steal your thunder. You know, the trailer park girl who grew up in the trailer park to mm -hmm. now a multi-million dollar business owner, woman-owned business, veteran-owned. Thank you for serving us. Thank you. I appreciate that. A Marine and the, the fact that you run this multi-million dollar business and are the president of the company, you really don't spend your time where most women do. I don't. I'm, I'm uh, back in the day when we used to talk about being... Uh, in a foxhole, which I was fortunate I didn't have to ever go into any combat situations, but I jokingly refer that I'm in a foxhole all the time, which that's where you would dig in and, and take cover from any incoming uh, arsenal that could come your way. But uh, I feel like I'm in a foxhole a lot of times and um, try, trying to make a way for women and to dig our way out of the foxhole. That's uh, well, I mean, scared, intimidated, um, overwhelmed. Do any of these adjectives even resonate with you? They don't. They don't. Um, uh, I used to joke with one of my girlfriends that if I could bottle up my confidence and sell it, then I'd be a multi-billionaire. Um, I think that I've just come through too much muck and um, decided that I love who I am. And uh, if you don't love me, then you can go find someone else to be with, you know. But um, I don't. I love my myself, my body, my mind. Um, the things that I'm doing in the community and uh, I want to be someone that women can really look to and know what confidence means and to be um, someone that doesn't have confidence it's hard to promote that to other women so um, uh, if anything I feel sometimes I might be intimidating to other women and I think I've lost some opportunities instead of other women looking at that approach and being um, drawn to that and want to be more like that sometimes I intimidate other women mm -hmm. and I really just want to lift up other women and and want them to be in situations that I'm blessed with someone said to me uh, recently his name is Josh he's now the director of over the chapters in first tee um, an amazing nonprofit golf program but he said you know our job to when we get to move forward in life is to reach back and grab two hands yes. well Tiffany you don't grab two hands you line up a you know 25 people <laughs> and then they have two hands and 50 people come with you yes. and it seems like I'm being silly but it's true personally and professionally you do that they go bowling a hundred people have to show up <laughs> you know it's that's who you are so leading the company a commercial uh, painting company that focuses on industrial commercial painting retail I mean Middle Tennessee Tennessee yes. and then even you're, you're touching the outskirts or the borders outside of Tennessee yes. I mean how does that happen how do you make these things happen well honestly um, it's a partnership with me and Jason I mean you know Jason and as well your as boo my boo my bae. <laughs> uh, bay was a thing that we said in New Orleans before bay was a cool thing you know 
Um, but everyone was your bae, and he's my bae. He's my soulmate, best friend, partner, life, everything. And um, we took an opportunity. I, I had a full-time career in property management and real estate, yes. which was my passion. And I had worked to get all of these you know, degrees and certifications. Uh, who knew that I was going to drop all of that but still be in the business mm-hmm. with everyone that I either worked for or had hired. Um, but he took an opportunity to do some painting, and that just grew and grew. And in 2008, when I decided to leave my full-time career and um, help him, his thing was he kept on saying to me, you know, when are you going to quit working for the man and come work for the man? And I'm like, when are you quit saying <laughs> you work start for, working the man, for the woman, work with the man? <laughs> and, um, and so, um, you know, we started a partnership, and people ask us all the time, you know, how do you live, work, play with your best friend? I was friend, just going to say that, right? And um, lots of hard lessons, you know. I mean, there's been times when we've gone to counseling. There's mm-hmm. been lots of prayers. Mm-hmm. There's been lots of how do we communicate better? Um, we don't agree on everything all the time, you know, but that doesn't mean we can't figure out where to compromise. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a lot of it, too, is um, you got to swallow your pride. you got to be humble. And as a woman, whenever, it's like instantly when a man starts to talk to me about something, I kind of put up a shield. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, but this is the way I want to do it. And I have to understand, and we all got to understand, that it's very important to have both sides. We need the man's perspective. We need the woman's perspective. And that's truly how we have grown our company so much, was that where I'm weak, he's strong, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing was that we wanted to create a company where not only can we help our employees and them have vested interest in our company, uh, we do profit sharing with our foreman. No other company does that out there. Uh, We give great, you know, I think we pay our people well, and I think that we do things that other painting companies don't do. But it's also afforded us the opportunity to be able to help our community and some things around the world. So, Don't you have an um, orphanage, nonprofits? Yep. Let's yes. dig into that, please. Let's dig into that. So there's a couple things that's close to my heart. Um, as you mentioned, you know, coming from a trailer park in Louisiana, uh, my parents were entrepreneurs. My mother and dad um, were landscapers. My dad cut down trees. My mom would uh, landscape. In the winter months, they would go inside and they would clean people's houses. And there were literally times where we didn't have gas or heat we'd have to put blankets up in the hallways and my dad would have the oven open and that's how we stayed warm. Wow. We don't have the cold in Louisiana like you have here, but freezing there is still 30, you know, 40 degrees, 35 degrees is cold. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we were never hungry because we were able to depend upon churches to help us sometimes. And so, um, I don't think anyone should go hungry and, um, we have an abundance of food in this country. And so one of the organizations that we love to help support is the branch in Antioch. They're a um, food pantry and an English is a second language institute. And one of my good friends, Melissa Thomas, is the director over there and she's doing amazing things. Um, they just left from one building and they're renting um, a huge gym with the Antioch United Methodist Church. And so we're looking at um, helping them get paint. And it, that's how I help. I, I make the place nice looking for them, you know. So there's times when I send my painters over to paint for her at no cost. and try to help her any way I can. We help fundraise with her and donate the money to her. Um, the other one that you mentioned is, um, and I want to say this right, Jumbo. That means good hello. And um, it's our orphanage, My Savior Lives in Mumas, Kenya. My sister actually went there three years ago. So this isn't just like a place I picked out of. My sister right. went there, met everyone. Um, there's a man that runs it with his mother and wife and he's the director and he's like a brother to me and he's amazing kakana collins and um they have 126 children that they take care of these are orphan children that they have lost their parents either due to militants that have killed them they have no identity so they help them get through school and then they help them get an identity and they all go on to live successful lives and we're sitting here today with some equipment on a Mm -hmm. podcast Mm -hmm. talking to you the insiders And when I hear that, it gets me overwhelmed because I think we need to thank God. We need to just give, give, you know, give thanks to whoever may we believe in something greater than ourselves because our life is not purposeful unless we're, we're supporting someone else. I truly believe that. And so, yes, at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, you hear it all the time. What footprint are you leaving on this earth? That's it. What is your legacy? What is your legacy? And the other day, um, 
they got they got inspected and they didn't have a outdoor wash area just for them to wash their hands and so we raised some funds and we built an outdoor wash area for them to be able just to wash their hands now we've raised funds to be able to build separate um, latrine areas for the boys and the girls and when I say like a latrine like there's not a there's not a working toilet there's not a working shower mm -hmm. they go and get water from the well and someone's pouring it over them as they bathe so that way they can be clean and you know we're starting to do the malaria shots uh, COVID is over there also so a lot of the kids have gotten COVID they got to go get IV treatments to get their their strength back up so um, that's one of the things that I love and he sends me videos and you see the children just rejoicing in God's presence because they do teach Christianity and these these kids are saying God's name and singing songs to him and they're in some some detrimental situations but they're just happy to be alive right and we're worrying about you know how does my hair look how's my hair look mm -hmm. you know or I need to go down the street to get cheap two cent cheaper gas right you know mm -hmm. um, another organization close to my heart is canines for warriors um, I've got an event on Monday that I'm a part of a golf tournament and um, the proceeds are going to buy uh, a dog for a wounded warrior. So we jokingly say, uh, you, you got a new leash on life. <laughs> We're saving two Aww. two beings. We're saving an animal from a high kill, a dog from a high kill shelter. And mm -hmm. we're giving um, a wounded warrior um, a purpose. And yeah. so- uh, And a companion. Yes, a, a companion. Right, a, co a committed partner mm -hmm. to walk alongside them. Yes, right? and so Jason Santiago is a retired army vet who was having struggles and um, alcohol was, was his demon and he had no purpose and he got Bristol and Bristol is the, re it was his purpose. And so we joke, you know, he says, you know, who saved who? Did Bristol save me or did I save Bristol? Mm, so beautiful. Yeah. And I, you know, and you can go on and on. We are going to talk about NAWIC because yes. I'm passionate yes. about this organization, Women in Construction, because of you. Thank you. Um, the gift of the relationships that I have today, the powerful women that are in my life, the influential women that really, and it's not just women. You, you brought up such a good point. We need to approach things from a universal approach. Yes. We're all great. We're all we're all here to uh, we we should be yes. committed to others. So with that, but I want to take it back to CNR because yes. I, I have to go deep. I've go got deep. to go to the inside story Let's that is not told. People don't publicize what I'm going to ask you to focus on, and I trust that you want to share this because owning a company mm -hmm. to be in position to even create the revenue the relationships the opportunity for all these things that you're passionate about to serve others comes from the company yes cnr services the fact that it is growing and leaps and bounds multi-millions now yes and on track for 2022 to be probably bigger than ever bigger than ever but let's talk about the chapter that makes me sad that when you told me and you trusted me with it about the time when you weren't sure if this business was going to be around in 24 hours. That's correct. So That's walk correct. us through it, please. Well, you know, um, I think every entrepreneur, uh, and I always confuse the expression, but there's working in your business. And working, working in it or working business. on it. Mm -hmm. I always confuse the two, but. Because um, you're doing both. Because I'm doing both. And, and we had some great people that came in for a period of time that was helping us. And uh, Jason and I had been working in the business for so long, we were burnt out. And we were, we were wanting to relieve some of the um, responsibilities that we were having. And we trusted some people to do some great things. And they did some great things, but um, it also helped overextend us in a lot of ways. And um, I stepped back probably a little bit too much. And... I think that that's the fine balance. Like entrepreneurs have got to understand no matter what, you, you always still have to be in your business. Yes. And, um, and you surround yourself with great people and you trust them. But the reality is that it's not their company. Mm -hmm. They don't have a vested interest. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they can leave and they can go get another job. In a second. In a second. Or not even let you know. Yeah, not even they're let gone. you know they're gone. And, and I applaud people for bettering themselves, and I want to be that person that supports anybody that wants to improve their lives and, and do that. But when I got a phone call that was like, I don't know how we're making payroll this week, and I don't know how we're going to you know, pay this loan we got to pay, and I don't know how we're going to keep the lights on. And I was like, wait, why did we get to this point before? I should have known. I should have been more involved. But as you know, I'm all about lessons and how do we learn from those lessons and how do we improve ourselves. 
And so all that had to happen for us to truly understand that um, this is our baby, and if we want it to be a second generation and third generation one day, that you know we have to stay involved and um, we have to make sure we have good people, but we also have to stay involved. And so, um, you know, I came in and I called people that I hadn't reached out to in a long time. I was like, listen, I need money. I need to make payroll. Can you help me? And uh, it's humbling and a little disheartening, but it also made me truly learn how to run this business. And uh, we, we did about, you know, one and a half million that year. <laughs> COVID hit, you know, and then it was like, what are we going to do? We were blessed with doing disinfecting and also still painting. And um, we came through that year. And then this year we've had one of our biggest years yet. So On some of the um, biggest projects, the Icon projects. Building in the mm -hmm. Gulch, Fifth and Union, mm -hmm. um, you name it, restaurants, Red Pepper, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can go on and on. Yes. You know, and I know most yeah. of most of my great friends w won't name drop. But I'm like, you should. I That's the point should. of us being here with the I'll insiders to be Ruby, like, you, yeah, you know, there you go. Um, um, Virago's, which is in Iranian War, but you know, Whiskey Kitchen and mo many show Hans plays. And um, we, we love high end retail. Um, Healthcare companies, yeah. CHS building, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, or the, the corporate. The cap building. Mm -hmm. um, we do, um, there's a lot of just, you know, gray paint we throw on walls, but there's a lot of places around Nashville that you're like, wow, look at that. Um, we're currently painting Cumming Station. Wow. We painted um, um, a large majority of the Grand Hyatt that just opened. So, um, the big thing that we're realizing, though, is that in this town, um, there's a lot of opportunity to, I don't like to say compete anymore with a lot of the big guys that are out there. I'm, I'm meeting them, and we're calling each other co-petitors instead of competitors. I love that. Co-petitors. Co-petitors. Yeah. And so, I mean, we're, we're still young in the big mix of things. I mean, I'm competing with guys that have been doing this third. Charlie Irwin, a great man. I love him. He's a great man. Uh, Charlie and company? Irwin. Charlie Was Irwin painting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so um, we went and had lunch a while back, and we're trying to figure out as a minority business. I'm certified woman owned, veteran, certified small. woman. Mm -hmm. I'm working on my veteran certification. I can just say I'm veteran owned right now. But there's now these large companies, general contractors, and there's a lot of private companies too, HCA and other companies that are like, if we're going to use you, we want to know you're using woman owned and minority owned. And so they got to get a certain percentage. Well, I want to be able to offer them the opportunity to use someone like us. And you're going to meet that and right. you're not going to have to worry about anything. Um, so I'm p competing with guys I've been doing this 30 and 40 years. But you know how to make friends, <laughs> which, which really, there was something that you said that really led me into, you know, the power of the certification and, you know, NAWIC. Yes. Um, you know, so my team for years has walked alongside construction companies. You know, we're the behind the scenes social media management, business yes. development, you know, Andy Sneed, Wasco. Yes. And someone that, you know, you were talking that you use Wasco Masonry, one of the top 10 masonry companies in the United States. Um, but that you, you've been walking alongside each other for 25 years plus. Yes. And, and you're playing in a pool where if you're going to go swimming, not everybody's super huggy kissy. That's right. Right? That's right. So, which brings me back to, you know, the diversified family that's inside CNR services. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Well, um, you know, the, the bilingual, yes. there's opportunity, right? Yes. So. Well, you know, we, we wanted to be someone um, that's different and, you know, we're a corporation. So you got to walk like a duck, talk like a duck, right? <laughs> Um, and I'm not one that's like that. I've We're got, HR nightmares. Right. That's I'm why we work for ourselves. <laughs> I say inappropriate things. Yeah. Uh, we didn't even say so, the F word once. I'm so proud of Oh, us. my so God. Proud. High five. High five on that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry. Focus. <laughs> so, but, but we wanted to be someone that you could come in, and if you need to be here for two hours, but you want to go work from home the rest of the day, we want to trust that you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, if you say you're going to job sites, if you, you know, um, your word, to me, at the end of the day, integrity is the most important thing. Yes, yes, ma'am. And so um, we surrounded ourselves with people that um, sometimes we interviewed them for, for a couple of years. They just didn't know they were being interviewed. Um, Julie, you know, I met with her one time, and, you know, we decided not to hire her yet. And then a year later, I call her up. I'm like, please tell me. She's like, I've been waiting for your phone call. Aww. So Julie's going on five years next month. Amazing. Right? Happy anniversary, Julie. Thank, thank you, Julie. We love you. She's our right-hand woman. 
Um, Caleb, who's our controller, who he's literally the one that has come in and cleaned up our books and got us. I mean, we have a line of credit we don't even touch because he stays ahead of getting those accounts receivable in, you know. Um, I got him because him and Hayden worked at Sonic together. And Hayden is your son. And, Hayden is my and son. now that your son's second generation yes. is already entered into your company. Yes. And mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's being awarded jobs every day. I mean, he's one of our top estimators. And uh, one day he's, you know, in the morning he's cleaning toilets. Sorry, Hayden, I'm telling on you, but, you know. <laughs> no, it's just, but he's it's not above it. He's not above it. And Jason wants him to know, most importantly, everything that you do here that you ask anyone to do, you know how to do it. And mm -hmm. you're not afraid to do it. Mm -hmm. And so one minute Hayden may be scrubbing toilets, the next minute he's delivering paint, the next minute he's out on a multi-million dollar job site. Mm -hmm. So right. um, we have to be flexible, we have to be fluid, and um, to hire people that we know we can trust. Um, our other, we got two other estimators, Josh, um, he's bilingual. He goes and he can stand and talk with our crews and speak so fluent. And um, we got Zach, because Zach was roommates with Caleb, and he was a project manager in a different company, but it's all the same. You know, it's all relevant. If you can right. manage a project of anything, then you can estimate. The mm -hmm. fact that you have people on your team where life's, you know, they made decisions that weren't yeah. appropriate and so forth, yeah. right? I so, mean, we do, we you're do oh, the culture. The culture. That, you know, what really is the differentiator in a construction company? Mm -hmm. It's the culture. It it's is. the people. It's the people. And... We work with a lot of different general contractors. Um, many years ago, our whole focus was, let's get facility managers and property managers. I was a property manager. I was very close to my painting company. I mean, when you think about who brings to life your building, everybody's important on the whole project. But in my opinion, we're the ones that make it pop. We're the ones that bring the color. Mm -hmm. We bring the wall covering that yep. may be digital prints now. Mm -hmm. And so we we basically were like, if we're going to be hospital, retail, industrial, commercial, how can we by, be diversified? And so we started not just taking care of property managers and facility managers. We started getting general contractors. On those general contractor sites are lots of languages. And so, I mean, I have crew. So we have teams. We have crews. I've got Guatemalans. i got Mexicans. I have Puerto Ricans. I have El Salvadorians. And, and people think, you know, the Hispanic language is the Hispanic language. No. No. Each language, just like we have our own slang. Mm -hmm. the way Portuguese. I talk, Portu right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and Josh can speak so much of it. It's really quite amazing. But um, the difference is, is that we want everyone to feel like they're part of a team. And in order to feel welcomed and included, to be DEI, to be... Um, um, diversive and then to be equity in your people and to be inclusive you have got to learn to speak the language I'm currently doing a really deep involved language thing where I you know I use my Google Translate all the time like if you don't use Google Translate I'm sorry I go to my nail people and I now can sp I speak Vietnamese when I nail people, right? <laughs> oh, oh, oh my yeah, God, they, that's yeah. so funny. And it's funny that's because awesome. they were talking one day, and I'm like, I know what you're saying. And so um, I go to a Ochi, which is a massage place in, um, in Opry Mills, and they speak Mandarin. Amazing. Yeah, and so I pull out Google Translate, and I'm speaking Mandarin. <laughs> And they You're and so their funny. faces light up that mm -hmm. we're communicating. You know I'm going to do that. Shame it, on me that I never thought about it. If you're not using Google Translate, get out Google Translate. And 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 I think the biggest thing is that other cultures really feel connected with you when you're willing to try to speak their language too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one to be like I'm not proud to be an American and all that stuff, but I think it's important that we recognize that we're only all Americans because of our diversiveness. Mm. Well said, well Thank said, you. which, you know, and you're growing and later on we're going to grab some footage because okay. you've just taken over the whole building. Yes. I drove up and I grabbed a little snippet of like, oh, a few little suites that they occupy, but now you're taking over the whole building because yes. of your company growing um, and you're looking. So let's talk about, in case there's an insider out yeah. there, male or female, that has never thought about the construction industry, mm -hmm. which is back to NAWIC. We should talk about it. I'm, um, I'm ready to talk about NAWIC, all things NAWIC. So tell me about the, who you're looking for. Estimators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, currently we're looking for some, I call them green, some baby, baby estimators that maybe um, you've been estimating for a general contractor 
who, you know, they look at 20 or 30 different trades. Um, obviously, we're one trade, we're painting. So we can help you come in and um, get years, 20 years of experience between, you know, with Jason's experience, my experience. And um, we use some great platforms. We use Plan Swift to roll out our estimates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We use Build and Connected to keep track of our stuff. So I think we're pretty organized now compared to how we used to be. And then um, all part of growing a company, it though, is, right? It is. And you've had to. Yes. You figure out what doesn't work and you figure out what does work. And that's the great thing. I want people to understand there is no book mm. that's a perfectly written for a husband and wife painting company whose sons are coming into the company, who you want everyone to feel like you're part of the family, you know, and you welcome people and they, you want them to stay long term. Our people get scalped on projects all the time. We have mm -hmm. other contractors and other paint companies coming from out of town, and they're offering our people 50 cents to a dollar more. And they're gone. They're gone, and it's temporary. But then they want to come back to us. And we do take some back because we understand people make decisions. You think the grass is greener on the other side, mm -hmm. but that's temporary. We hope our people understand, and that's what we communicate to them, is that you know we're here for it. We're here. Mm -hmm. We promised them through COVID no layoffs. We didn't. We promised them we'd keep them busy 40 hours. They get 52 most times. We're keeping our people busy, and they understand that culture. We have an event coming up in November that we do every year, and it's a Thanksgiving for them. We're thanking them. Uh, we Great. have food. We That's have so beautiful. We have prizes to everybody. And we want to create a culture that people feel welcomed and that they're a part of a, a family. Which you welcomed me in so many ways. I do want to make sure that I just give thanks to you because when we first met, we were introduced, we both joined an organization, and I'll just say we joined that organization to meet each That's other. That's exactly right. But I was experiencing a really um, a turbulent time in my company in the inside story, and I really needed someone with strength and confidence who had walked through some fires, and you had, had handled many. Yes. But to have someone simply not feed into the emotion, but say, let's talk about the steps. Yeah, yeah. Let's just dig into the steps that we shouldn't do, we should have done, we could do. Where are we going? And that communication set a stage in our friendship where when you said to me, I need you to check out NAWIC, yeah. the women of construction or, or anything, you know, I don't stop and say, oh, well, let me think about it. I just do it. You do it. Because yeah. it's intentional with you. Everything's intentional. Thank you. So take me through NAWIC because I want to cover that part about the women because there's just so many people that recognize now more than ever that we have the opportunity to be anything. That's exactly right. Um, I think yesterday was proof of it. We had, we had our NAWIC meeting yesterday that kicked off our new board for this year. So Ashley Spence is the president this year. I'm the vice president. And she's um, going to be taking over yeah. the southeast uh, region one of, one of these days. She's on a mission. Maybe I'll even be a national director. One All day. right. So, I'm coming with you. I love that. Let's do okay. it. Um, but basically, you know, I was in a bunch of networking groups that um, I'm a vendor in, and I'm trying to get these property managers business or, or facility managers business. But there wasn't really one that was just feeding me. Like, my cup was empty a lot. And um, I went and visited NAWIC, which is the National Association of Women in Construction, I'm talking from the moment I walked in the door, I felt welcomed. There were no clicks. There weren't just these three women sitting in a corner over here from the no, same company. It doesn't exist thing. in the org. It wasn't like that. It was um, superintendents, foremen, accountants, subcontractors, um, media people, you know, connection people, things like that. And mm -hmm. NAWIC is just so welcoming. And I was like, this is what I want to really be a part of. And you know me, when I jump in, I give it my all. and when I decide to give it my all, I'm like, I want it to be truly worth the investment. And so um, I got on the board and then um, ran for, I was, the, I was the membership director, basically. And we went from... <laughs> and you frustrated people because you had the most people on a membership committee ever, hands ever, down, in ever. Nashville. Because <laughs> I, I think the more of us that, that work together, the less work we all got to do, right? Yeah, but you can't reach back and take two hands. You have yep. to bring 50. I got to bring You're 50. like, come on, everybody on the membership board because I'm, I'm leading it. You know that. 
It's, it's true. all about how, what, how many can I put in this room? Literally. And so I got with Nawick and I loved it. And um, I just went to the national convention to see 500 women sit in a room that all have like mindedness. How can we continue to grow ourselves in construction? But what can we also do for the younger generation of women to help start propelling them into our position? That's right. And so um, that's what I'm noticing is like, I used to be the young woman in the room. <laughs> Now, you know, I'm, I'm, now they say ma'am for two yes. reasons. Oh, we're my God. Old? No, we're not yeah. old. No, I'm I'm 48. This we're year. seasoned. We're seasoned. I feel like I'm, you know, matured. And when I when I hug friends I haven't seen for a while, I'm like, this is one of my oldest friends. I don't mean like old. I mean, like, <laughs> I've known you so long. Yeah. So you're my uh, oldest friend because yes. you're old. You know, you're can you old. imagine? No. Well, All right. Dang it. But yeah. Um, I love this group, and um, yesterday was evidence of the opportunity that we have to grow. We expected 23. We had 38 women show up. I met a bunch of the women at um, Barbecue and Red Shoes, which is a Ronald McDonald Charities fundraiser mm -hmm. um, that AGC puts on. And it's all the GCs around town all come out, and they have a big barbecue festival mm -hmm. and a banana pudding contest. <laughs> mm. All about banana pudding. All, all about some banana pudding. And then, um, so I was out there that day just working for NAWIC. It wasn't about, because people are like, are you paid by NAWIC? I'm like, no, I'm, I own a, a commercial painting company. Known as C&R C &R Services. services. Uh -huh. um, but mainly I'm out here because I want to get more women that are in construction in a group that other women can help support you. Yeah. And so um, yesterday was a great example of that. I, we have so many women that sign up to be on committees. And, and there are these younger generation that are like, I want to be involved. Yeah. What can I do? Mm -hmm. What? There's a whole networking group for women in construction? Yeah, honey, there is. And uh, you know what? And I don't want to diminish what you're saying when it comes to numbers. But when I heard yesterday there's about 5,200 women nationwide mm -hmm. in NAWIC, I was disappointed. I understand. I, let's, let's put that in perspective. Mm -hmm. 5,000 women yes. in the United States yes. that are connected because of construction. Yes. We all know there's a lot of women that have been in the industry mm -hmm. and they're connected in so many different ways, whether they're the accounting company that supports construction companies to you name it, mm -hmm. right? IT companies, so many. But the fact that there's an industry that we're, we're clapping, yeah. oh, yeah, we have 115 members. Yes. I'm like, but there's so many. Maybe we should have thousands. Thousands. thousands and thousands. thousands. And thousands. Or yes. more importantly, it's about the fact of the mission that whatever man or mm -hmm. woman that they did the support yeah because they're floating out there i mean sitting in these meetings mm -hmm. some of the largest construction companies have their people yeah right coming to the meetings you know turner yes you name it we can name drop and when you're sitting next to someone you're like wow they have you know five thousand people in their company and they have one member yeah who just found out about nawick yeah so it's it's just being passionate to get out there and open our eyes especially now when i think times are exciting yes we can choose to say it's difficult we can use that word pandemic or we can say it's time to reinvent ourselves yes. pivot yeah and thank you because you were a huge part of that but thank you you know so we could talk more about nawick but i would say i, I want to address i want to pick one thing out of that what i believe is happening is that i mean nawick was started in 1953 wow. by 16 women and for us to be where we're at right now and to say we have 5,000 members that is huge mm -hmm. but I think we should be 20,000 members. Easy. Easily. To know the support, yes. the relationships, yes. the business. The education We connect foundation. each other yes. all day. I left yes. yesterday with five opportunities yes. for multiple clients and so forth from an hour and a half lunch. That's exactly right. What I believe has happened is that there is a stigma when you say women in construction. I think a lot of women hear that and they think I got to be the boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like I need to be physically in construction. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. If you are an office manager, mm -hmm. if you're a business developer, if you're IT, if you're accounting, I mean, these are all aspects of women in construction. Right. And we want to grow all of that, you mm -hmm. know, um, HR. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a woman in construction and HR, we need you because we're trying to be DEI. You know what I mean? And in order to be DNI, you got to be able to reach out to your HR people and say, mm -hmm. how are you including people in your company? And so there's a lot to it. Um, construction Executive Magazine just did a huge article, um, and they're all women, NAWIC women that are quoted in this article. 
And it basically was like, are you ready to hire a woman in your construction company? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Right. You know, is it how many construction companies today? Forgive me for interrupting. Don't even have an HR department. And they have hundreds of employees, yes. and they're still the good old boys. Yes. Well, that's what we're trying. We're we are trying to break those ceilings. And um, when I was at the barbecue event the other day, I had so many of the men from these organizations coming to me, going, "What exactly do you do?" And I'm like, "I need to meet with you, so you know what NAWIC is about." Mm-hmm. And I had this wonderful guy. His name's um, I- I'm New Orleans, so I want to say A Bear, but it's probably Herbert. H e b e r t, right? A <laughs> bear. I'm I stealing make it that. French. I want to make it a bear. <laughs> it's like Tarje. So it, okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And he's like Tiff. He goes, I want to get all of my women in Turner with you, and I want to help sponsor you guys. And so it's that making that change, you know. And he's an African American dude, so he knows what he's up against, mm-hmm. and he knows even more what women are up against. Right. And he's like, I'm going to make sure y'all are being taken care of. Mm-hmm. And so it's and the, for the benefit of the men yes. and the rest of the people in the yes. company, when the women in your organization, if you haven't thought about hiring a woman, yes. or that you do have women, the more that universally. You're you're supported when a person is absolutely purposeful and living with joy yes they come in and they bring that synergy and yes. women influence that way they do they do and and there's statistics out there i could quote and stuff like that but you know we used to say that the construction industry was a male dominated field mm-hmm. they have now changed it to male populated because women are taking up 42% of that. Wow. And I'm like, if we got 42% in the field, we should have 42% of women in these organizations being supported. Goes back to my point with the 5,000 in mm-hmm. NAWIC and so forth, which just, but we're here today yes. to talk about you. Well, thank you. And I we've covered. I say also that Na- our NAWIC chapter has doubled in size in one year. One year. So my, my, you know me, I'm always like, well, if we double this year, we're going to double down next year. We're going to double. So I'm like, we're going to have 500 women in Nashville alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like, that's my goals and dreams. Mm-hmm. And if we all did that, we could be up to 7,500 to 10,000. Like, Absolutely. That is what I want to see one day. I, I, we, we just want to tip it. We want yes. to tip the top of it and just be able to say, we, we just want to reach out to people. Yes. Everything that you described of what you do, how you spend your day, personally and professionally, you're, you're just embracing and gathering people, right? And you love like on some them. some other people I know. Mm. It's, but, you know, you're, you talk about the sister and, yes. the, and everybody will boo and, you know, you throw a little purple in the hair. It's about being unique. Thank you. The inside story of Tiffany Wondro. Uh, is so much more than just being a, a, a business owner, a woman-owned business owner, a veteran-owned business, multi-million dollar painting company here yes. in Nashville. But all of that is so important. But at the same time, the inside story, we touched upon some things of difficult times, mm-hmm. struggles, the oopses, the positives. But leave us with some you know, thoughts. How do we reach out to you? How do people get blessed to know you as I get to know you so well? Well, you know, I love selfies. <laughs> I love a you selfie do. and I love social media. I, it's not going anywhere. If you if you're not doing this kind of stuff, if you're not on social media, um, if you're not I, I say I don't tick tock, I tick stock. So I'm a stalker, but I have learned so many things from watching TikTok, um, from watching other people's social media, from watching podcasts. Um, Angela Prophet, two two F's and two T's. You know she's got a company called GSD, and she shows me which how to is do, get shit done. Yeah, that's get what shit it means. Done. Yeah, that's what it means, mm-hmm. and that's what we're about. Is getting mm-hmm. shit done, and she sends these amazing emails that show you things to do. On she's a she's a Apple. She's like there's a three guru. of her in the whole world, mm-hmm. and she's one of them. So um, she sends amazing things out that shows you how to block off time on your calendar and how to use all these apps and how to stop typing emails. How to stop typing like yes, talk to yeah. your email. Like, that's it for you. you know, she's amazing. You gotta Her whole get with team. Times. She's am- she is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to get with the times. And for me, I want to just say, if you're not on my social media, please follow my social media. Um, C and R services, so it's C A N D R services Inc. Because you can't do the ampersand. We do actually have the little C and, mm-hmm. but you can't do that in anything. So you got to spell it all out. Mm-hmm. Um, Tiffany Wandro, follow me. Um, I love I love followers, and um, I love connecting people. And that's the big thing. Um, if you need something, just ask me. 
I, if I can't do it, I can help find the right person. I Absolutely. Can. Or two or three or, or three, five or a hundred. So on that, Insiders, thank you for being with us today on our episode with Tiffany Wondro of thank CNR you. Services here in Nashville. Uh, again, just, you know, bigger than life. Life, mom, boss. There you go. Power on. That's so it. just thanks for being here. And thank we're you, saying God bless you. Thank you. Thank God you. God bless you. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Inside Story Hunters. If you liked the episode, be sure to share your aha moments with us on Instagram at Lori with a story. Please take a few minutes and share our podcast with your friends and family. Leave us a review on the platform where you're listening. Remember, we're not strangers. We just haven't connected yet. We would love to hear your inside story because your story matters. Want to share your story? Don't forget to enter our monthly contest for a chance to win the opportunity for us to choose your story. Each month, we highlight an inside story on our blog. Simply head over to LoriWithAStory.com and be sure to connect with us. Thanks. Bye for now.